hey what is up guys welcome back to another youtube video at the world of ai in today's video we're going to be focusing on a project which is called recurrent gpt now recurrent gpt is a special kind of model that can generate paragraphs of text now this is something that chat gpt is limited to doing as it's not able to give you a large output of contextual generative content now what recurrent gpt does is that it uses a technique called prompt engineering to make it more like a regular LSTM neural network, which is a long or short term memory system, which it utilizes in its neural network. Now, instead of using numbers to represent information, it uses paragraphs of text. Now at each step, recurrent GPT gets the new paragraph of text and a short term plan for the next paragraph, and then looks at all previous paragraphs it had generated and picks the ones that are more relevant to using special search methods to give you more context as well as more information. Now, recurrent GPT also has a short term memory that keeps track of important information from recent steps. It uses the memory to, alongside with the current paragraph to plan and to ask the large language model for a new paragraph. Now, it also updates its long term memory by remembering the important parts of what it had generated for its previous steps. And this is a little breakdown as to how it's able to give you such an amazing as well as such a larger output compared to what chat gpt can do and this is something that we're going to be showcasing in today's video we're going to be going a little bit more in depth to the framework that illustrates what current recurrent gpt can do also going to be showing you some uh, types of examples as well as the demo as to how you can actually use this and utilize the tool for different use cases so guys, if you guys haven't followed my Twitter page, please do so. Uh, turn on the notification bell and you'll get the most latest AI news over here. If you guys haven't subscribed, please do so as I'm going to be continuously posting the most latest updates on my channel of different types of AI content. So definitely do so by subscribing and turning on the notification bell. And it would mean the whole world to me guys if you guys can go like this video as it will definitely help the algorithm out. And if you guys haven't seen any of my previous videos, please do so as there's a lot of content and a lot of value that you will definitely benefit from. So with that thought, let's get right into the video. Before we actually get into the video, I want to give you a more in-depth understanding of what happens with the recurrent GPT. Now, at each time step, as it formulates as well as utilizes the system to give you an output, what recurrent GPT does is that it receives two inputs, a paragraph of text and a brief plan outlining the content of the next paragraph. And this is something that we highlighted at the intro. Now, these inputs are generated in the previous time step. Now, the model then leverages an alternative attention mechanism to access the long-term memory, which then contains summaries of, the all, of all previous generative paragraphs. And from this, the long-term memory can be stored on hard drives, which then utilizes short-term memory to give you a more efficient way of creating a new paragraph that entails the best ways to generate a larger as well as a more contextual representation of what you're trying to look for with recurrent gpt and this is how this actual application actually optimizes itself to function and this is something that we're going to be showcasing in today's video now before we actually get into the gist of all the things that we're going to talk about i want to go a little bit more in depth as to writing or giving emphasizing a little bit more on the architecture of this application now in this framework the it basically it is showing that it's able to enable recurrent prompting with language models and this is by stimulating a recurrent neural network now what it does is that it utilizes natural language components and it defines the recurrent computation graph with different prompts now in a way this is an application that is just utilizing prompt engineering to get you larger outputs now, I'm going to explain a little bit more as to how you're able to get these outputs that are larger. Now, in this paper, if you guys get a chance to read it, I'll leave it in the description below. But the paper mentions that some previous works have attempted to add recurrent mechanisms to transformers, which are the base architecture for many large language models. While they attempted to have shown promises in modeling and generating long text, they often require significant architectural changes that may not scale really well when they are outputting larger contexts. Now, most current language models still rely on an original transformer architecture with minimal, minimal modifications. But 
in this case with recurrent GPT as a large language based approach, what it does is that it mimics the recurrence mechanism of different RNNs. Now in this figure, we're able to see that it provides an illustration of this concept. In recurrent GPT, you're able to see that the elements of long and short term memory are using a thing called cell state as well as a hidden state and an input and an output state. Now, what that means is that it replaces the natural language representation of different paragraphs that are inputted into the actual prompts. And through this, there's a recurrence mechanism that is being played around in the back, which stimulates different types of prompt engineering to give you a larger output, which we can see over here. Now, at each step, time step, what recurrent GPT does is that, as I talked about previously, it receives a paragraph of text, it has a brief plan for the next paragraph, and from the inputs that are generated from the previous steps, it utilizes those previous steps to get you the framework, to get you the best output for the next paragraph. And that is how it functions, as an output is chosen, and then it's sent to the next paragraph, which chooses the same types of steps that it created to formulate that original paragraph to generate the next paragraph by using different things and leveraging the power of the language model to generate text, which combines the inputs very effectively and it's very cheap and very efficient to use. So now with this case, guys, now we now that we have a better understanding of what the actual architecture is, let's go more in depth as to understanding a little bit more about the inputs and outputs. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll get a heading which talks about the language based building blocks. Now in recurrent GPT, there are two main components which you can see inputs and outputs at each step of the process. And the first input is obviously going to be the paragraph that you input within the system. Now, this is where it adds the final output text. And this paragraph is referred as the content. Now the second is the input that outlines for the next paragraph that is going to be used to generate and that is what is called as plan which we see over here and the content is typically made up of around 200 to 400 words which basically is already in a readable format and it contains the main information as well as the ideas that will be included in the final text on the other hand you have the plan that is shorter as the outline consists of three to five sentences approximately, which is something that they stated over here. And it serves as a guideline as to what the next paragraph will be able to generate. Now at each step, the content and the plan generates a previous step and that those are called the recurrent GPT and hence why it is named recurrent GPT as it allows the model to build upon the previous steps of the information that is given and it generates new content based off of the given prompts. Now with the recurrent GPT, it's specifically designed to not only produce content, but also generates plans. And that's one thing that is really a key feature of this actual application as you're able to get a plan as to what you're trying to generate for future context. Now this is done obviously by enhancing the interpretability of the generated text. And what it does is that it facilitates interaction between the human as well as the actual computer that is running the application. And by providing the plans, you as a user can understand and edit the actual generated content more easily, which gives you an easier prompting for better user experience when utilizing ChatGPT as well as recurrent GPT. Let us now take a look at some of the advantages of recurrent GPT. As we know, it offers a unique approach to generating long text, but what are some actual ways that it does? And obviously these are some of the pointers that they talked about. They talked about efficiency, which basically shows that you're able to reduce human effort by making progress of a bigger context that is generated using AI. In this case with recurrent GPT, you're able to easily get larger contents of what you're trying to generate very easily and efficiently. Now, the interpretability is also another big advantage as users are able to directly observe the internal language based states of recurrent GPT. And this is basically through the transparency that is given and allows uh, the people who use the actual application to understand how the model is generating the text and make a more informed decision about the content. And this is something that we'll see from this actual demo because you're able to see where the content is being used to create the next paragraph as well as the plan that is being used to help you create the next formulated response. 
The third advantage is the interactivity of recurrent GPT. As it enables interaction between humans and the model, you're able to get more of a specific type of response as you're able to edit and modify the generated text using natural language. You can edit as well as see through what the actual AI is trying to plan for the next paragraph and get a better response that could be more sp specific to an individual as well as being more related to your own preference. Lastly is its customi customizable feature, which basically means that users have the flexibility to customize your current GPT by easily modifying these prompts. You can just change one word to get a more different type of res or like a more unique type of response. And this is basically allowed to users to take the time to tailor the model to their own specific interests as well as their own needs. And you can do this by adjusting the style of the generated text, playing around with the parameters, and you can do that using the actual application. Now I wanna focus a little bit more on some of the actual experimental results because it basically shows you some of the key like results that puts experiment GP or recurrent GPT over other types of models that try to emphasize the same type of thing. Now, in this case, you're able to see that there's an improved efficiency as the use of recurrent GPT led to an increase in efficiency in generating longer text compared to conventional computer assisted writing systems. And this is because the app is allowing users to make paragraphs or chapter level progress that results in a reduced human labor and faster writing outputs. You can see that there's different genres that gives you better types of results in horror, sci-fi, romance, fantasy, uh, mystery, as well as thriller. You're able to get these advanced types of improved efficiency results. Another metric that I wanna talk about is the enhanced interpretability. And this is because recurrent GPT has been able to demonstrate high interpretability, which allows users to be able to observe the internal language model, which gives you a more, like a greater insight into the decision-making process and a way to understand how the generated text is being outputted. And lastly, I wanna talk a little bit more about the increased interactivity, which basically means that the app is able to facilitate an interactive experience compared to other types of applications that are trying to achieve the same type of uh, like goal that recurrent GPT is trying to do. And this is something that we can see in this research paper. So if you have time, definitely do take the time to read this as there's a lot of different types of things that you can get a better idea of. Now I'm lastly gonna focus on the limitations and basically the only limitations that I was actually able to think about and what they emphasize is that recurrent GPT is still generating a lot of different types of errors. And sometimes it like, it's not able to give you the most accurate information. And this is like one of the things that are hindering it from succeeding but obviously every type of application in the ai world has things that provide interact or uh, inaccurate types of information so this is just a small problem that will be fixed later on as the ai world progresses and it's just something you want to keep in mind when using this application now if you actually go on your repo on the actual repo link for recurrent GPT, you can see that there's a couple examples that you can play around with as well as get a better idea of. Now, there's a prompt engineering tab which shows you how the actual outputs of the paragraphs are like sent out to like make the next plan for the paragraph. You can see how prompt engineering is used to get a different type of paragraph for the next queue. This next example in figure two shows that the research paper presents a qualitative analysis of using recurrent GPT as both as an interactive writing assistant, as well as an interactive fiction generator. Now this figure is showcasing that the highlighted plans or the choices that were selected by human users during the actual experiment. Now one ex aspect I wanna talk about is its effectiveness of recurrent GPT in generating very long text. This is something that ChatGPT is not actually able to do because in this case with recurrent GPT, it demonstrates that its capabilities to handle and producing coherent and engaging content for contextual, contextual writing tasks. Now this is by finding a significant source to showcase the types of ways to generate the text. And it showcases that the model's ability to main not quality and consistency during the extended text generation. Now, additionally to this, the figure is also showing that it indicates human annotators preferred using recurrent GPT across various novel, novel genres. 
Now let's actually take a look at the demo of Recurrent GPT as well as getting a more in-depth, larger response being generated using Recurrent GPT. Now there's two types of tabs. You have the auto generation as well as the human in the loop, which gives you instructions as to what will be created for the next paragraph. In this case, I'm just going to be showcasing auto generation right now. Uh, let's say in this case, I want to create uh, a horror film, maybe or not a horror, let's say fantasy. And let's say, give me, write me a novel based off a fantasy world that has mushrooms and magical beasts. Now, what you can then, once you give it the description, obviously this is just one tiny little prompt, but you can give it the generation and it'll start generating. Now, once this is done, I'll be right back. Now, if finished generating, we can see that it's been able to write. This is just the current step it is able to generate. Now, you can actually give it different instructions to give you a revised type of paragraph for the next output. And you can see that this is just the current one step. And this is able to generate such large types of content. Now, imagine what you can do in the human loop where you can play around with each step of a generated paragraph. So this is the beauty of recurrent GPT as you're able to give you, as it's able to give you a larger context of AI generative content. And this is why I really want to cover this because chat GPT hinders this type of generation and it's quite easy to use as it's completely free and this demo will give you a better idea of how you can actually utilize this tool so i hope you found this video quite informative guys because it's an amazing tool that will definitely be used for a lot of different use cases now overall i definitely see that recurrent gpt is a clever model that combines the best of both long-term and short-term networks as well as utilizing different types of language models and i definitely see this as a quite like useful tool for generating larger text. So I'm definitely gonna be using this for different use cases whenever I'm trying to generate different types of scripts or types or larger context of contextual generative AI. And with that thought guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Make sure you give this a follow. Uh, if you guys haven't subscribed, hey, please do so as it would mean the whole world to me guys. And if you guys haven't seen any of my previous videos, uh, you should definitely do so as there's a lot of content that will help you get, get ahead in the AR world. And with that thought, guys, make sure you like this video. Have an amazing day. Spread positivity. Have a bright smile. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later. Peace out, fellas.